Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails and Rocktails. With me, your most notorious groupie, Allison Rouse, and author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. That's right. And these other ebooks, link where you can get that. My merchandise, Patreon, cocktail or beer of the day. Everything is down in the description, guys. So hit that description. Go down like I would go down on the back lounge of a tour bus in the 80s. Took me, you know, blowjobs do open a lot of doors. You'd be surprised. Didn't blow the road crew. Don't get the wrong idea, you guys. Oh, my God. Anyway, so for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome aboard. Really great to meet you guys. Hope you're going to have fun with this. And for everybody that's been here as from the beginning or longer since before my book, you guys are fucking awesome. Thank you so, so much for all the love and support, all the positive messages, everything that you put out every day for me. It truly, truly means the absolute world to me, you guys. I can never say enough. And you guys have a lot to say. And today's topic is a question that somebody asked me earlier. Um, did grunge kill the groupie scene? <gasps> Great question, because I get a lot of people wondering that, because we all know that grunge kind of took on a different attitude. Kind of is going to be my answer, but we'll get into that in just a second. And for today's cocktail is going to be one of my favorite locals, Talisman. This is their kilt lifter Scottish Ale because I do like to look under the kilts. But we also know that grunge did, didn't necessarily reject the groupie scene. So we're going to lift their kilts for a little truth. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Get your kilts on. Kick up your feet, and let's have a little cocktails and rocktails, shall we? Ooh. Sorry, let me get poured. Oh, God, i got to finish this whole bottle. No bummer. <laughs> Cheers, big ears. Mmm, so delicious. And no, you guys, I am not sponsored by any of my locals. I just love these guys. I worked um, in the liquor scene here for a while, so I got to know a lot of people. Got to try a lot of great beers from around the world. It was awesome. Okay, so let's get right into it. Did grunge kill the groupie scene? Like I said, sort of. Sort of because in interviews, and in interviews only, as we know by the Jerry Cantrell story, and really Eddie Vedder, because we all know I've been with Eddie Vedder a couple times. <laughs> Anyway, so in public, yes, in interviews, because the 80s had come off where we were just so brazen and brash and open and crazy and wild about the backstage and heavy metal scene and how sex, drugs, and rock and roll groupies were really, truly accepted into society, but at the same time rejected because we were supposedly not liberating to women. It's like, fuck, I'm liberating my sexuality to exactly what I want to be. So I think I'm pretty liberating. Anyway, so, and grunge being what it was, they're like, oh yeah, groupies and hanging out on the bus, just screwing someone for the night. It's so degrading to women. Oh, give me a vein type of attitude. You know, like, they said it was degrading to women, but yet, they were fully taking part in that groupie scene. I mean, I have a whole grunge stories, which I've already posted a couple. I lived in Seattle and definitely was a part of the scene. I was definitely sleeping with a few of the grunge guys. So behind the scenes, no, they were fully active and partaking in the groupie scene. They were shunning it publicly. So publicly, as a lot of people do, they believe what is being said in all the interviews. So they, people got in that lemming mindset and kind of got a negative attitude towards groupies. But trust me, I have been through every era since 1985 to past 2002 when John passed away and I became a different part of rock and roll history. I'm, I still hang out on the, on the rock scene. So I've seen this all happening firsthand. I've watched this. So I think I to have a pretty good first-hand knowledge of what was actually going on behind the scenes. And grunge, no. There were just as many groupies hanging out for the grunge boys as there were for, like, 
the glam metal boys, the Motley Crues. Like I said, thrash metal even was like more excited by, women were more excited because they were big, strong, just rough men, you know? So, but that's not the only thing that kind of put a damper publicly on the groupie scene. Because really, let's face it, it's all public opinion. It's not what was really going on behind the scenes. It's what created public opinion. One of the reasons the groupie scene kind of changed, and you can ask any of the other 80s groupies about this, is that we all grew up from the cities we lived in, Salt Lake City being the groupie capital, and moved out of there to different places. So it kind of shook all the good groupie scenes like Salt Lake City, like Detroit, like um, Houston or, or Nashville and stuff like that. So the really great rock groupie scenes were sh disbanded not by rock and roll but by the groupies and we didn't stop hanging out just because I moved to Seattle or Danny moved to Florida and I lived in Las Vegas or Kristen was in Hawaii or whatever we all kept going it just wasn't that big camaraderie crazy scene that we had had for so long for so many years and same in Detroit like I said we all grew up like Mandy from Detroit moved to LA. Like I said, I moved to Seattle. I moved to Las Vegas. I moved back to Seattle. Long story. But anyway, so that kind of affected the groupie scene as well because it wasn't these weird out of the way places that were not LA or not New York. But this is where we were moving to different places. So we weren't like the big old same pack of groupies, you know, with everybody just sort of hanging out and doing whatever, it was kind of became more of a personal, private event that was happening with us groupies and our rock stars. And we had known the rock stars for so long by then that we were considered road wives and groupie, stuff like that. But so that kind of affected the groupie scene as well with the advent of the new atti grunge attitude towards the groupie scene publicly, which I'm going to keep saying that because like I said, Privately, it was a totally different story what they were saying publicly. But another thing that really, really, really just destroyed, made a total joke out of the groupie scene was the appearance of the movie Almost Famous and about 10,000 chicks called Petty Lane. <laughs> Fuck. So that kind of like took the personality out of rock and roll out of the backstage took that really actual human connection that we were making in the 80s those long-term friendships that were longer than the two years two weeks two tours i mean 30 years of friendships and rock and roll and backstage and when almost famous came out and all those girls started trying to emulate what was going on it kind of took the reality out of the chicks. They were just trying so hard to, I love your music and because your music means so much to me. And, oh my God, you're like our modern day Led Zeppelin. Oh my God, did you ever meet Pamela at the bars? No, no one from 1978 knew who the fuck that bitch was. So, and that kind of ruined the groupie scene because it came, became more of a trend. All of a sudden, Visa and MasterCard and... Ticketmaster and everybody in the tours were offering these package backstage deals so you could live the night of a groupie and everybody became high and mighty. And the business side kind of killed the groupie scene because now it's like they pay for those passes and stuff on some tours or it's really, really tight and how many passes and tickets that can be given away to guests. So because of that trend, because of that movie, because of the fame that, you know, all the 12,000 penny lanes became thinking that's what the rock stars wanted and were so wrong, people just kind of got meh, didn't want to meet any of those new groupies. So the groupies that were like me and my friends were fewer and fewer and fewer and far between because we were not raised on a trend. When it came to groupie, it was just our instinct. It was where we were supposed to be with our tribe. And I hear less and less of that today. You know, less about really being part of that tribe. 
and more about wanting, wanting, wanting to satisfy getting that lead singer, getting that pass, or seeing what it was like to be. I want, I worship Pamela DeBar, so I want to live that life too. That kind of really, really is what brought down the groupie scene. I mean, I think grunge kicked it off with the attitude change, the public attitude change. Because like I said, we know. I've hung around a lot of grunge bands, a lot of new metal bands, a lot of everybody. Rap, pop, club kids. Like I said, I am a genre-bending groupie. There is, I wasn't just... One little thing, I loved music so much that I was around in it. And like I said, because of the trend, because of the whole Penny Lane and all that bullshit, there's less and less groupies who come on the scene that are just truly, truly in love with the music and see it as part of their life and their heart and soul. You know what I mean? It's something that they don't have an emotional investment in anymore. It's more of an egotistical investment. So, grunge sort of helped kill the groupie scene, but there were several other factors too. And like I said, us groupies in the biggest cities, in the coolest cities, according to the rock stars themselves of our era, because we moved out of those cities, there were no longer these huge, burgeoning, just explosive groupie scenes where you could spend a few days and nobody was any the wiser because... I mean, would you think Salt Lake City would be that wild? Oh, hell no. Which was the beauty of it. But then Salt Lake City did start getting attention at a couple spin articles and stuff like that. So, kind of made Salt Lake City a trend. I saw that happen back in the early 90s. And like I said, because we left and because our relationships with the rock stars were so different. And when these new Penny Lane groupies came along, it was... Yeah, nobody wanted to talk to a wall. They want to talk to a human being, not a trend. So that kind of killed the groupie scene. And then, of course, we have COVID, the pandemic. Things are a lot tighter. Things are a lot more protective because you don't want to get the tour sick, which still happens. So, but the groupie scene is alive and well. I see a lot of young girls coming out, hanging out. But like I said, they're few and far between because they're not star fuckers. And trying to find a star fucker these days is what the hardest part is. Social media, the internet, everything, that also helped kill the groupie scene. Because we didn't have any of that. We had a huge wall of privacy that doesn't happen now. And you can't have the same kind of fun without that comfort of that wall of privacy. Just impossible. So there you guys go. That's why the groupie scene. And plus, you know, to be quite honest, us 80s groupies, we took a rock and roll backstage to a whole different level that nobody saw. We invented the term road wives. So couldn't top the best. Just kidding, but not kidding. Anyway, there you guys go. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you kind of get a little clearer idea of really why the groupie scene changed over the years. More of a public opinion rather than what's really happening in private, behind the scenes. So, ladies, if your heart and soul calls and you just can't stop it, come on over. We need more of you around these days. Those new boys need something like that that's not going to post on their social media all the time. So, all right. Again, you guys, don't forget to go down in that description. Check out my merchandise. If there's something you would like me to design, a t-shirt you want, let me know. I'll be happy to design anything you want. It only expands my market. So, fuck yeah, let's do it. If there's anything, any questions you have, put them in the comments. Any comment, any ideas or whatever you have on today's topic, put it in the comments. I love it, inter interacting. So, all right, you guys, don't forget, hit that like button for the 50 percent of you that are haunting my channel hit the fucking subscribe because i'm almost to a thousand and when i hit a thousand i'm giving away cool ass stuff doing all kinds of things all right guys hope everybody's doing great thank you again for all the love and support cheers big ears